Auxiliary has always worked on the live vaccine. We have a history of having worked on the live vaccine. We, in fact, uh, produced the current batch of vaccine that's being used. Because the live vaccine is already available, um, the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funded GalvMed to undertake the commercialization and deployment and registration of this vaccine uh, in selected countries in sub-Saharan Africa. It's a vaccine that's quite difficult to make, and by difficult I don't mean technically difficult. Uh, I mean it takes a long time to produce, it takes about 18 months to make a, to make a, a batch of vaccine. Uh, but the difficulties are in terms of assuring reproducibility of that vaccine because it's a live vaccine and because of the biology of the parasite. So the vaccine is extremely crude. Uh, it basically takes infected ticks, grinds them up, you get rid of the big bits, and then whatever is left in the solution is the vaccine. That vaccine works extremely well. It's robust. And so we have a mechanism of artificially immunizing uh, animals. The vaccine is expensive. It has to be stored in liquid nitrogen and delivered in liquid nitrogen. That can give rise to logistical problems, but by and large, those can be solved. Uh, but I think the major issue is the high cost. Uh, it's about 8 to $12 a dose. One of the other problems is that when an animal recovers from infection, it still remains infectious to other animals. That has given rise to concern about what the consequences of this might mean in terms of parasite spreading. The problem is still the same. However, the science has evolved to such an, a degree that we really believe that we will be able to make huge strides in our ability to be able to tackle the problem. What the new technologies allow us to do is to understand that at a level of detail that we never could before. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has provided funding uh, that now allows us to form a consortium to work on what is known about East Coast fever and to take the current knowledge that we have uh, to the next level in terms of providing proof of concept for our ability to be able to produce uh, a subunit vaccine for the control of East Coast fever. The project has wider impacts in several different areas. The first is within livestock diseases itself because there are related Tylaria species that cause other tick-borne diseases. So whatever progress we make on in, in the area of East Coast fever is directly applicable to the other Tylaria diseases as well. On the human side, there are other pathogens that, for example, those that cause malaria. All of these pathogens are very similar in terms of their biology, in terms of the mechanisms that give rise to immunity. And there are shared molecules as well that exist between these parasites. So again, whatever we find in East Coast fever has direct application to the other diseases and vice versa. Along this uh, pathway, uh, we would have to engage with the private sector to be able to use private sector technology in terms of then taking it to the next phase uh, for, for, for larger scale field trials, for upscale manufacturing, uh, and then to take it through the rest of the regulatory procedures that need to be developed for a, for a subunit vaccine. Not only are we located in an area where the disease is endemic, so that we have access to parasites uh, that are present in the field, and we have access to animals in the field, uh, we also have extensive farm facilities and refurbished laboratory facilities that allow us to carry out research that's equivalent to that of any other livestock vaccine-related research facility in the world. Mm -hmm.